Alright, welcome to today's lesson on Swing, where we're going to be learning how to create our own components with our own design uh, and then use them into a Swing environment. In order to do that, we first have to look at the hierarchy of all of the classes that exist in the Swing uh, package. So basically, the overriding object that exists, and this is for everything, is the object class. And this basically makes a basic object with like a two string method and some other basic methods in there that we can inherit from. Um, in the swing hierarchy, we then have a component class, which then has a subclass of a container class, which can basically be used to hold things. The container can be divided into two types, either a window or a J component. Inside the window class, we have the subclass J frame, and that's what we've been using to run all of our programs in. And everything we put in there is a J component, which we can add to that J frame. And all the swing programs we've made so far have used these J components that are pre-existing, pre-coded components. What we're going to do today is instead of using one of these specific pre-created classes, we're going to create our own J component class that is also going to inherit from J component here and then be able to be used inside of a J frame. So how do we do this? Well, we're going to extend, as I said before, the J component class to create our own component, which we're going to call stick figure. And it's going to be used to draw a component that is essentially looking like a big stick figure. And then we could take that figure and put it into all of our programs wherever we want. To do this, we first have to make a constructor for our component, just like any other object that we try and create. And then we also need to override a particular method found in the J component class called paint component. This particular method is the method that's responsible for drawing or displaying the graphics of a particular component. So when we override this, we can provide all of our own instructions on how to draw the component that we're trying to create. So the constructor. In the constructor we're going to create for our stick figure class, we have to again use the super method, which is going to allow us to draw a basic J component. The next thing we're going to do is set the size of the component for our stick figure component. And we do this the same way we did in our previous lessons by using the set preferred size method. And if you recall from our previous lesson, in set preferred size, we require a parameter to be given of the dimension. And the dimension would be uh, a si uh, an object that has a width and a height. So we provide two integer values for width and a height um, that's going to represent the number of pixels wide and the number of pixels tall of the component that we're trying to create. So once we've done the constructor, we then need to go back and override that paint component method. This is the method, as I said before, that's responsible for displaying the component on the screen. basically determines what it's going to look like. The paint component method is inherited from the J component class. And we have to make sure that we're going to call this version from the J component class because it may have some important functions that need to be performed to make the overall component display in the first place. So therefore, in our stick figure class, we still have to call the super.paintComponent method so it can draw whatever it needs to draw before we draw our things on top of it. Once we've done that, then we just need to write the code to actually draw our stick figure or whatever component it is that we're trying to draw. Now to do that drawing, we have to use this object that is being passed as a parameter. This is a graphics object from the graphics class, and we're going to call it G for simplicity's sake. Okay. If you want to know all of the methods that exist for this class, you can go into the Java docs, the documentation online, and look up the graphics class, and it'll provide you all the methods. Here are some of the more basic common methods that exist. So we've got draw line, that will draw a line from x1, y1, point x1, y1, width and height, to point x2, y2, another point width and height on the screen. We've got draw rectangle, which draws a rectangle on the screen from the uh, top left hand corner being at position x, y, and then it has width pixels and height pixels. Same thing for an oval. What it does is it draws an imaginary rectangle, just like draw rectangle, with this top left hand corner between uh, starting at x, y, with a certain width and a certain height. And then what it tries to do, it draws an actual oval, the largest oval it can possibly fit inside that rectangle. So if this slide were my rectangle, I'd try and draw an oval where it would just rub up against all the edges of that imaginary rectangle I just outlined here. We can also fill both of those objects with whatever color we currently have. We can fill the rectangle the oval. And we can do a draw string where you provide a string and it starts at position x, y on your screen and writes out that whole string that you've 
specified here. And again, there are many other methods you can look at. Just go look at the API documentation for the graphics class. So if I was going to code my own version of the stick figure, here we have that stick figure. You can see it's going to extend J component. I have the constructor we talked about, so I have to do super, which is going to create a J component for me, and then I'm going to create a preferred size. In this case, it's going to be 180 pixels wide and 280 pixels tall. I then have to override the paint component method that is found in the J component class, so public void paint component and the graphics object. I call the um, parent class, or the super classes version of paint component here, and then I've got spaces where I can put in my body, my head, and my legs. So we're going to, for the head of my Homer, we're going to set the color um, so it's g.setColor and we want to do yellow and then I'm going to draw my oval and we want it sort of centered in this space here at the top of the screen so it's going to be um, right sort of in the middle at the very top and we want it to be a circle because it's a head then we're going to try and do the body so we're going to change the color that he wears a white shirt and we're going to draw two rectangles one for the arms and one for the body so again g dot fill rect we'll make a rectangle and fill it in in the color white so we're going to go from one side all the way across the other side with a width and a height and we'll draw the body now you might have to play around with these numbers, I've, I've already done this before so I know what the numbers are, but you might have to play around with these numbers to fit it exactly where you want it to go on the screen and that's okay as long as you understand what each of these variables are being used for you should very easily be able to fiddle around until you get the right values that you're looking for to make it, your diagram look the way you want it to so now we're working on the on the legs Oops. apparently I shouldn't talk and type at the same time so the legs are going to be blue and we're going to draw a rectangle for the legs there we go, that's the values I was looking at before and I want to change the color to black so I can draw the space in between the legs so it doesn't look like one big black leg. He actually has two of them. So there is the outline that I'm going to have for my, my Homer. Now if you look at my actual program, it's just like the, the swing class that we made before. So I've got the stick figure program. In my main method, I'm going to create a J frame. That J frame is going to have a J panel, which is going to be my content pane. And I've now created my stick figure component um, that I just finished making over here. So I've got a stick figure component that I'm going to create. And I add that component to my content pane. And then set that content pane as the content pane for the frame that I made up here. Do all the initialization of how I want my frame to look. So what it's going to do when it closes, set its location on the screen, pack it, make it visible. And when we compile this and run it, there's my homer that I've created and again you can see this is a component because I can just quickly and easily make another stick figure I can make as many as I want but I can make another stick figure we'll call him homer 2 and say new stick figure and then all I need to do in my contents pane here is add my second homer in there compile it and you can see we now have two homers side by side of each other. Okay, and I can keep adding as many homers as I want. Just like I can add as many buttons, as many J panels, as many um, J text areas, whatever it is that I want to put on my screen. The last thing I want to sort of mention here is you'll notice that we have this paint component method. But if you go back and look at the code, we don't see it being called anywhere, right? So I've got this this method here that I've created called paint component and I need to use it to paint my screen but I haven't called paint component anywhere in my main program so so how is it getting used how am I getting this this component being painted if I never actually call the method 
pink component? Well, the answer to that question is that it's sort of hidden from us. It's inside the code for the JFrame. The JFrame itself, if you were to look at its code and open it up, has been coded to constantly check the frame for damage. So in other words, if it's being resized, or if another window gets dragged over top of it, um, or anything like that, then it needs to fix itself or redraw itself over again. And when it redraws itself, it automatically calls the paint component method for each and every component that it contains inside of its window. So although we don't see where paint component method is being called, it is in fact being called inside of the code for the JFrame. That's it. That's all we've got for today. So we'll see you tomorrow in class where we can practice what we've learned.